Welcome to the Christian Pattern, the daily communion of saints, where the teachings of Jesus Christ are taught. We will now sing hymn number 221, Dear to the Heart of the Shepherd, after which we'll sing hymn number 303, Keep the Commandments, and then I will offer an opening prayer. Thank you. 
We will now sing hymn number 303, Keep the Commandments, after which I will offer the opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so indeed thankful to come before Thee and to study Thy Gospel and to know how much that we love Thee. We invite Thy Spirit into this day. We ask Thee to live in accordance to the words which we learn today in the Scriptures. I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading of the ninth chapter of Proverbs. Wisdom hath builded her house. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. She hath killed her beasts. She hath mingled her wine. She hath also furnished her table. She, uh, she has set forth her maidens. She crieth upon the highest places of the city. Whoso is simple, let him come in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish and live and go in the ways of understanding. He that reproveth a scorner Get it to him shall shame, and he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a blot. Chasten not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. Whoso is simple, let him turn in, in hither. And as for him that wanteth understanding, she said to him, This is a strange woman. Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knoweth not 
that the dead are there. And that her grave, uh, her guests are in the depths of hell. The word of the Lord. We will now read Psalm 70. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Let them be turned back. Let the enemy be turned back for a reward of their shame. That say, Aha, aha, let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee unless such as love thy salvation say continually let God be magnified but I am poor and needy make haste unto me O God thou art my help and my deliverer, O Lord, make no tarrying. <coughs> we will now proceed to Romans chapter 5, the first 11 verses. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in, in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Also, knowing that tribulation worketh patient, patience and patience experience and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet pray adventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love for us toward us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God. To our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. I will now say this as clear and concise as I can. And I'm going to explain this like an uncle would explain it to his nieces and nephews. We are justified by faith and we have peace with God our Father through the Lord Jesus Christ by his atonement. 
you think about it. Without his atonement, justification is not even possible. It's not even possible. I'm just telling you what I see. And why not? I'm unapologetic when it comes to my faith. That's that's a no given. If you think about it, we are justified because of his atonement. Because of his blood. We are saved from the wrath of God. Even though we were his enemies, we were reconciled because Jesus is our Redeemer. We were reconciled given a chance to be reconciled because of his death. And we act out that reconciliation, that justification, by living his teachings that he taught us while we were alive. But once again, as, as the Book of Mormon says, there must needs be an infinite atonement. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. And no apologies. Now I hope you enjoy listening to the Christian pattern. I, I want to say this testimony that Jesus lives. The Bible and the Book of Mormon together are the Word of God. We have a living prophet, even Russell L. Nelson. I said this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hope you enjoy listening to the Christian pattern. If you like what you hear, please subscribe. Become a part of this movement. Until next time, remember who you are. Read your scriptures. And please, please, please preach the gospel. God bless you.